Hello and welcome to Crow Forest the Podcast. So last time I read the first section of the production segment of my book, and we left off at June 26 of 2022. So I will pick up there now. June 26, 2022. Today we're set to do the dream sequence. So now it's time to finally figure out how to do that costume. Maureen has a long, white, old-style nurse's uniform that she thought would make a good base, and we could layer up plastic over that. So we'll see how well that works. I still think that wrapping bubble wrap around her might work well. Plus, if it doesn't work, it could even be the basis for our next movie, The Curse of the Bubble Mummy. Maureen is not in favor of that idea, but I think it sounds kind of awesome. We ended up filming Maureen wearing her nurse's uniform with five thin plastic rain ponchos layered up over it and wearing the mask and gloves that I had made earlier. And it worked pretty well, but there was still a lot of exposed skin showing through the plastic. I thought I might be able to fix it in post, but Maureen said that She had a longer white dress with longer sleeves that might work better. So we filmed it again with the second outfit, and it worked much better. I might still have to fix a little in post, but it will be much less. And I can cut back and forth between this footage and the stop-motion footage of the tiny wax figure whenever part of the shot doesn't work. Now if I can just figure out how to blur the background so that the figure stands out more, and has more of a and make it have more of a dreamy quality to it, that will look really cool. After finishing up filming the bits with the costume, the next thing we got was the shot of Maureen picking up the transformed wax figure from near the end of the movie, wherein she drops the figure in horror and runs into her bedroom and slams the door. This was a tricky shot to get because the first action had to be all in one take with the next part of the action. The camera follows Maureen as she retreats into her bedroom and slams the door. Then the camera tilts and pans down, coming to rest on the transformed wax figure. The figure had landed upside down, so I had to quickly flip it over before panning over it. Then, while holding the camera still on the miniature figure, I carefully pulled the figure out of the shot so that I had a shot of just the floor where the figure had lain. When I edit this sequence, I will be able to do a jump cut so it looks like the figure just disappears. And if I held the camera steady enough, it should be fairly convincing. I guess I'll find out. Then, once I had the figure removed from the shot, I handed the figure to my mother, who was staying with me at my sister's house at the time, and she walked over to put the figure in the miniature bed in Maureen's miniature bedroom to match what my sister was supposedly doing in the next room. As my mom put the figure into place, I slowly panned back up from the floor, up to the top of the table, and started panning across the miniature. Then, once my mom had the figure in place, I panned over to Maureen's miniature bedroom and came to rest on the transformed figure lying in the bed. The figure is a bit too big for the scale of the bedroom, but hopefully it will work well enough. I really hope this shot works because it was a pain to film. This whole paragraph is all one shot and this whole paragraph is a pain to read. Next, we got a panning shot from Maureen opening the fridge and getting water to a matching scene in the... Did we? Because I looked for that shot. I could not find it. I think we forgot to get that shot. Next, we got a panning shot from Maureen opening the fridge and getting water to a matching scene in the miniature with the tiny wax figure standing in front of the miniature fridge. I'm pretty sure we actually forgot to get that shot. We intended to get that shot, but when I was looking for it later in my folder, that shot was conspicuously missing from the lineup, so... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we actually forgot to get that shot. Um, yeah, sorry. But in doing this, I noticed a problem. When Maureen put the miniature on the table, and 
Okay, this might be why we forgot to do it, because I noticed a problem, and we had to fix the problem, and then I forgot to actually go back and actually get the shot after we'd addressed the problem, but, uh, yeah, I'll get back into what the problem was and how we fixed it and all that kind of stuff. That's what you're here for. But in doing this, I noticed a problem. When Maureen put the miniature on the table, the open end was towards her, and the covered attic section was in the back. But in order for the match shot with the fridge to work, the miniature house needed to be oriented the same way as the real house. And that meant putting it the other way on the table, turning it completely around, with the covered attic in the front and the open end in the back. But I couldn't really have Maureen put the miniature down that way. It would just look unnatural to do it like that. So I knew that I would have to somehow turn it around in between shots. I considered just moving it in between shots and not even addressing it, allowing the viewer to assume that the ghost did it, or else just to not notice at all, but I decided against it. The assumption wouldn't be that the ghost had moved it, it would be that I had made a mistake. So I decided that I needed to address the problem head on by having a shot of the miniature moving all on its own when no one was around, turning itself to match the house. As if that was its natural orientation, sort of like a compass needle trying to find its true north. That already doesn't match the direction that I had it in the attic, but oh well, maybe no one will notice. It still seems like a good enough idea, and it solves one problem. Sometimes lampshading is best. Calling attention to a problem makes it less of a problem. I have here that it doesn't match the orientation of the attic, and I've gone over this in my head dozens of times, and sometimes I think it matches, and sometimes I think it doesn't match, but I'm pretty sure that when I have it at the top of the ladder in the attic, it does match with the house's orientation. I just get so turned around in my head. I, I'm going back and forth on that issue, but I, I'm pretty sure it does actually match the orientation of the house when it's up in the attic, so I think this is not actually a plot hole. I think that does make sense. And really, if I'm this confused looking at it and I can't figure out if it matches the orientation or not, probably viewers aren't going to notice something like that anyway. So yeah, clearly I've given this way too much thought, so yeah, probably no one would notice even if it is an issue. So the next thing I had to do was to turn the miniature. I tried turning it in a close-up shot so that my hands weren't visible while moving it, and it worked okay, but really it wasn't very convincing. I also tried moving it with the wax gloves, as if the wax monster were the one sneaking in and moving it. But the wax monster is Maureen's alter ego from her fever dream, or whatever it was, so that didn't really make sense either. So the only other option that I could think of was to do stop motion. Getting a still picture of the miniature with a tripod, turning the miniature very slightly without moving the camera, taking another picture, and repeating the process about a hundred more times. It would be tedious, but the results were sure to be much better than anything I would be able to get otherwise. Plus, this way I would be able to get an overhead shot of the full miniature so that you can clearly see, yeah, there's no one touching this, there's no strings, there's no any anything like that. Just uh, turning all on its own. I mean, stop motion, and it's a bit obvious, but, you know, I do what I can. The last thing I tried to get was a drone shot of Maureen arriving back home to be used as her second night arrival in the movie. But I had technical difficulties with the drone and wasn't able to get the shot. I crashed the drone almost immediately, and the battery was too low for a second try. Oh well, I'll just try again next time I'm here. Even without that, I still got plenty of footage to keep me busy editing for a while before my next filming trip. All right, and uh, that is all for June 26, so uh, we will pick up next time with June 27 of 2022, uh, the last day of my first production trip. Uh, so that will be next week's episode. Hope to see you then.